A speaking tuba voice pipe is a device based on two cones connected by an air pipe through which speech can be transmitted over an extended distance. While its most common use was in intraship communications, the principle was also used in affluent homes and offices of the 19th century, as well as expensive automobiles, military aircraft, and even locomotives. For most purposes, the device was outmoded by the telephone telephone and its widespread adoption. This device was also known as a megaphone, but that use has since become superseded. Design Early voice pipes consisted of two cones, of wood or metal, one end shaped to fit the speaker's mouth, connected to the other which was flared to amplify the sound. Later designs of the voice pipe inserted a removable cork-mounted whistle, which could be sounded by blowing into the tube from the other other end. On naval vessels, this created a distinctive sound associated with urgent intraship communication on old warships. The sound of the whistle would summon the listener who would remove the whistle and answer the call. Voice pipes could be used over distances as long as 300 feet. However, very long speaking tubes might use an electrical signaling device to indicate a call, as the large volume of air in the pipe would make it difficult to blow with enough pressure to sound a whistle at the far end. Despite this, a pipe with a larger internal diameter was desirable for a longer runs as the signal loss is inversely proportional to the pipe's cross-sectional area. Voice pipes have no switching mechanism and so, to provide multiple destinations, separate voice pipes with dedicated transit pipes have to be provided between all pairs of desired endpoints. The technology continues to be used into the electric electronic age due to its reliability and low cost. Voice pipes are unaffected by complete electrical power loss by an electromagnetic pulse. Warships built as late as the 1950s continued to incorporate voice pipes alongside more advanced technology. Maritime use Voice pipes, the maritime term, served to transmit reports from lookout positions aloft to the deck and from the bridge to the steering position and engine room. These were somewhat larger in diameter than the domestic version and were often covered in sound-absorbent material to increase their efficiency. About 1780, one captain removed a canvas voice pipe installed by an imaginative midshipman saying he was sure the topman would use it for an improper purpose. Copper voice pipes were being fitted to British two- and three-deck warships as early as 1803. A notable use was on board HMS Victory at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. Victory's ship's wheel was shot away early in the battle. A voice tube was then used to carry steering orders from the quarter deck down three decks, to where a gang of sailors operated the ship still directly using ropes and pulleys. One disadvantage of voice pipes is that they may breach the integrity of watertight spaces. This led to the introduction of shut-off valves on both ends of voice pipes to prevent water from a flooded compartment from entering other compartments varied voice pipes permanently fitted rigid voice pipes are still in use and are generally covered with heavy lids to avoid aggressive water the speaker has to place his mouth in the horn or bell-shaped end of the pipe and the receiver has to bend an ear to hear what is being said voice pipes have generally been replaced by sound-powered telephones even on modern ships however However, they may still be found linking wheelhouse and binnacle for communication of magnetic compass heading to the helmsman in the event of a blackout. Domestic use In domestic applications, voice pipes were smaller and referred to as speaking tubes. The ends of the tube were often flexible for convenience of use. The speaking tube supplemented the array of remotely controlled hand bells that were operated in the upstairs rooms and rang in the servants' quarters in even modest houses in the 19th century. The phrase get on the horn and give him a blow as well as the use of blower as a synonym for telephone are generally accepted as having 
The origin in this feature of speaking tubes. Speaking tubes were employed in some offices with whistles at either end and were therefore also known as whistling tubes. Several speaking tubes could be hung from the edge of a desk to communicate with different locations. Speaking tubes were also used in fine automobiles such as the 1927 Rolls-Royce Phantom, allowing communication between the separate passenger and driver's compartments when desired. Gosport Tube A Gosport tube was a voice tube used by flight instructors in the early days of military aviation to give instructions and directions to their students. It was invented by flying instructor Robert Raymond Smith Barry at the School of Special Flying he opened at Gosport in 1917. Modern Usage Acoustic tube headphones are used especially in two-way radio. These are useful because a clear tube can be used to hide the earphones. They are also sometimes used for the microphone on telephonists' headsets and to provide music to patients undergoing an MRI. I scan, as it would be dangerous to use metal wiring in the scanner's magnetic field. They were installed on the wards of UK hospitals for a time where the patient's radio was built into the nurse call and lighting control unit. This unit contains an electromagnetic conventional speaker but from that to the patient's ears was by tube, presumably so that the part contacting the patient could be easily cleaned. These systems are still in use. Pneumatic intercoms can be applied to motorcycle helmets for pilot-passenger communication. Similar systems are common on ultralight aviation too. They are sometimes preferred over Bluetooth or other radio technologies due to the simplicity and absence of batteries. Up to the 2000s acoustic tubes were in use in some civil aircraft for movies, audio and other audio broadcasting in flight entertainments. The principle of the speaking tube can be found on certain playground equipment, which employs tubing connecting sound horns or other speaking boxes to allow voices to travel to separate points, for the amusement of the children.